I want to talk about a very common and often misdiagnosed condition that people are suffering from when it comes to digestion. We look at so many digestive problems today, from heartburn, acid reflux, to IBS, to colitis, and there are many other diseases as well. But I want to talk about something that's really important. We call this SIBO. And SIBO stands for small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And this commonly occurs when there's an abnormal increase in the overall bacterial population in the small intestine. And these symptoms are loss of appetite, abdominal pain, nausea, bloating, an uncomfortable feeling of fullness after eating, diarrhea, unintentional weight loss, or even malnutrition. And the function of the small intestine is absorption. So foods, nutrients, vitamins can get brought into the bloodstream, making its way through the small intestine so it can get to all the cells, tissues, organs, and glands to keep your body healthy. But the problem with SIBO is that constant gas, that bloating, those belly aches, belching, and even constipation. And this could be detected through a sugar test, lactulose or glucose. When it gets in the small intestine, they want to check how it ferments. That fermentation releases hydrogen and or methane gas. And when those gases are above normal, chances are good that you have SIBO. SIBO can be contributed to thyroid problems, autoimmune problems, irritable bowel syndrome, previous surgeries. And it's something that you should understand because if you don't get to the root of this condition and find out what's causing your symptoms, you can be digesting foods incorrectly and that can lead to even malnutrition. But here's the big problem. You or a loved one may be taking acid blockers, proton pump inhibitors, limiting the body to secrete hydrochloric acid, that acid to digest your food, to kill pathogens, kill pathogens, as well as to digest proteins and allow calcium to get in the bones. It has many functions, but think about this. The stomach is right above the duodenum, the small intestine. It makes its way into the duodenum, and if that acidity is not there, that means you may have more pathogens that shouldn't be there as well. That extra bacteria colonies continue to grow, and there is where the problem may start. And with most intestinal issues, you want to go on a low FODMAC diet, as that will prevent the cramping, the constipation, the bloating, as well as gas and flagellants, which are those short-chain carbohydrate sugars that the small intestine absorbs poorly. So if you're suffering from all this bloatiness, all these intestinal problems, and it's not going away, you've been to doctors, this may be your condition that's commonly misdiagnosed. Doctors love to get antibiotics to get rid of the bacteria, but by eating correctly and doing the right things and staying away from those foods that could be exacerbating your problem, your body hopefully can heal real quick. I will leave some links below in the description that will tell you the best and worst foods when it comes to this condition. For any type of intestinal problem, these foods can always be helpful. I hope that this video is helpful for you. Please share it with your loved ones. And most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.